Hello from the Fraser River Discovery Centre, and welcome to an especially rocking edition of FRDC at Home. I hope everyone's got their thinking caps on, because this morning we are going to be delving into the geology of the mighty Fraser River, and we'll be doing it with a book. Uh, but before we start, I would like to take the moment to acknowledge the fact that the Fraser River Discovery Centre is located on the traditional and unceded territory of Halkomenum and Hunkomenum speaking peoples. Now it's important for us to acknowledge that territory acknowledgement is only one small part of reconciliation, so I advise you to think about some of the ways today that we can engage with reconciliation with indigenous communities. Now today's activity is all about geology. Now geology is the study of the physical features and history of the earth. Scientists who work in geology are called geologists and it's an important science for many reasons. It answers questions about how earth came to be, the various layers that make up of it, and we can also use geology to help us gain a better understanding of our physical surroundings. It's also useful for predicting natural disasters like volcanoes and earthquakes. So it's a very big field and it's very, very important, often in ways that you might not immediately think. Uh, and to start with, we are going to be reading this wonderful story called The Street Beneath My Feet by Charlotte Julien and Yuval Zommer. It's an illustrated story all about the different layers that make up the planet Earth and we're going to go on a journey from the top where we stand today all the way down through into the middle of the Earth and then out the other side. So I hope that you will join me on this journey. So without further ado, let's begin. The Street beneath my feet. When you're walking along the city streets, there's always so much to see and to hear. Cars and buses roar past and honk loudly. People chatter and shout to each other as they go to work and do their shopping. The store windows are colorful and bright. But do you ever stop to look down? What's going on deep underground under your feet? Well, let's take a peek. Just underneath the sidewalk, you'll find things like water pipes taking water to and from homes, stores, schools, and offices. Here are the wires that go up into the buildings to make people's telephones work and to let them use things like the internet, which is very, very useful. Other cables carry electricity so that everybody can watch TV, charge their gadgets, and turn on the lights. Now, when it rains, water flows through the gutters in the street gushes down into the storm drains below, where it is carried off to nearby rivers. It's not all cables and pipes underground, though. There are living things down here, too. Earthworms burrow their way through the soil, loosening it up so that water and air can flow through it. Earthworms are expert recyclers, eating dead plants in the soil. Look closely, and you might also see centipedes wriggling through the soil, looking for worms and small insects to eat and we call this the topsoil. Millions of tiny living things called microorganisms are also found in the soil. They help break down dead creatures and plants. Mmm, tasty. Now if we go a little lower, we'll be in the sewer. So hold your nose, this is where wastewater ends up, where it goes down the drain, or you flush the toilet. It smells pretty bad. Now can you spot any rats up and around the sewers scampering around? I can see at least four. How many can you spot? So, there are so many stories from history that lie underground. If you dig down just a little bit deeper, you might find objects left behind by people who lived hundreds or even thousands of years ago. There could be gold coins, pottery, or swords. Don't be spooked, but there might even be skeletons. These things have been buried all this time and can tell us a lot about how people used to live. For example, in this picture here, who do you think wore this helmet? This very, very unique designed helmet. Who might have worn it? Archaeologists are the people who dig for these objects and study them to learn more about the past. And they study the human past, all of the things that we make and use and they get left behind after we are gone. Now below that, you might start here hearing a rumbling noise, making the ground shake and shudder. It's an underground train. Passengers travel down to underground stations on escalators 
They speedily travel around the city in trains through tunnels deep under the ground. Though, of course, in Vancouver, we also have these sky trains that go above ground. But there are times where we are underneath the ground, and that's the subway. And that's what we're seeing in this picture here. This underground tunnel has been dug through a kind of soil called clay. And clay is perfect for tunnels because it keeps the water out. Now, below the clay, we have a new layer called bedrock. So let's head down even deeper. So this type of rock is also known as sedimentary rock. This rock formed at the bottom of the seas, lakes, and rivers long ago. Tiny grains of rock and sand gradually settled on the seafloor and built up in layers. Over millions of years, the top layers pushed down on the layers below, squashing them and making them into hard rock. If you're lucky down here, you might find an underground cave. This one formed when water wore away the rock and made lots of little holes in it. Watch your head though, there are stalactites hanging down from the roof of this cave, which is made of limestone. And fun fact, limestone is a type of sedimentary rock that formed in the sea. Spiky stalactites form when water moves down through sedimentary rock. The water picks up minerals from the rock and eventually drips out through the cracks into a cave. And when the minerals in the water touch the air, they harden again. These small drips build up over time to make big stalactites, and it can take hundreds of years. At the bottom of the cave, there are more rocky spikes sticking up this time. They are called stalagmites. They are built up from the drips falling down from the stalactites up above us, and they're still growing. In some underground rocks, you might find something that's very useful to humans. It's a type of material, a rock that you may have heard of, called coal. And in this particular cave, there's also an underground river flowing at the bottom of the cave. But watch out, the water is very cold. But back to coal. So this coal formed over millions of years after dead plants sank to the bottoms of swamps and became a thick sludge. Over time, this sludge turned into a soft, dark layer that we call peat. When the peat was squeezed by rocks pushing down from above and heated from below, it changed into a much harder layer that we call coal. For hundreds of years, people have dug down to get the coal to burn it for heating to make electricity. Now there's another layer of rock down here as well. This is called igneous rock. And it's formed when melted rock from deep inside the earth, called magma, cooled and hardened. This igneous rock here is called granite. So we've traveled a long way down, but we're still only in the top layer of the earth. So let's pick up some speed as we delve down even deeper. Hold on tight, because things are about to get shaky. We're deep in the Earth's crust now, and things are really, really moving. The crust is made up of large plates of rock. These rock plates move around, and when the edges of two plates rub together, there can be an earthquake. Scientists use a machine called a seismograph to look out for movements in the plates. Even the tiniest wobble can warn them that an earthquake is beginning or could be about to happen. The plates of rock that make up the crust sit on a layer of partially melted rock called the mantle. Now, Earth's crust is only about 22 miles, or 35 kilometers, thick, but the mantle is more than 70 times as thick. Very thick, and more importantly, very, very hot. So now that we're getting closer to the center of the Earth, things are getting really hot. We have now hit the outer core of the Earth. This layer is very hot and completely liquid. The outer core is made of melted metals, specifically iron and nickel. Now, below that, right at the center of the Earth, you'll reach the inner core. If we go down any further, we'll start coming out on the other side. The inner core is the hottest place on the planet, reaching temperatures of almost 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 6,000 degrees Celsius. It's solid, though, and mostly made up of iron crystals. Iron crystals in the outer core create Earth's magnetic field. Without this, we wouldn't be able to find our way using a compass. The inner and the outer core together are around 4,900 miles, or 7,900 kilometers, thick. 
No one could really travel down so far. The heat and pressure are just way too intense. Instead, scientists have figured out what's down here by using their seismograph that we talked about earlier, and the complicated calculations to help them figure things out. So we've still got a very long way to travel before we get back up to the surface. So let's zoom up through the mantle and to the crust. Back up at the top of the mantle, there is magma on the move. Where there are cracks in the crust above, magma can move upwards. It will burst out as lava erupting from a volcano on the Earth's surface. The rock here at the bottom of the Earth's crust is very hot because it's so close to the mantle. As you travel through the crust, look out for really, really beautiful minerals. Minerals like agate and amethyst and diamonds, and there's even gold. All of there just hidden in the soil for us to find. There's even copper. Now, diamonds are a type of mineral that form deep in the mantle. They form when carbon is heated to very, very high temperatures by magma and squeezed very hard by heavy rock uh, above it. When the magma th moves up through the Earth's crust, it carries the diamonds with it. And when it moves near to the surface, we can find it. Move up a bit higher and we'll hit a new type of rock layer. This is called metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock used to be sedimentary and igneous until it was gradually buried so deep down that it became heated by the Earth. As the rock heated up, it was also squeezed until it changed. This layer that we're looking at right now is marble, which started out as sedimentary rock limestone before it was heated and squeezed. It will gradually get pushed up to the surface where people use it to build statues, buildings, steps, and tabletops. You might have some marble in your own home. Now let's continue up. In some places, water travels deep under the ground and settles. Uh, it will then work its way up through the gaps in the rocks and trickle out at the surface as a spring. Now we're getting closer to the Earth's surface now, so keep an eye out for fossils. You might have seen some fossils before. Fossils show us the, were the living things that existed millions of years ago. When these creatures, these plants, these animals, and these insects, when they died, their bones sank into soft mud. Gradually, more and more layers of mud, clay, and sand covered up the bones, and they became surrounded by rock. Over time, these bones became rock-like themselves, and eventually turned into fossils that we can find to this very day. Scientists called paleontologists study fossils to learn more about prehistoric life. Many fossils are absolutely tiny, but sometimes they can find a complete dinosaur skeleton. So how many fossils can we find on this page? Let's take a few seconds to see what we can spot. All right. Further up, you might find loose stones and forest animal skeletons. And you can tell you're close to the surface now because there are actually tree roots poking up, up just above us. There's a forest above us in the soil. Now, roots are very important. They're in a very important in part of a tree. They hold the tree in the ground so that it can stay upright. Roots also take in water from the soil and draw it up to the tree's branches to help keep it alive. Because just like us, the trees need water too. As you move up through the roots, you'll probably come across some underground homes, many burrowing animals that like to dig their homes close to the trees. So how many animals can we spot in our cozy homes here? I can see some rabbits, I can see some badgers, there might even be a mouse there too, see if you can spot it. So badgers live in dens called sets, and they are made up of linked up nesting chambers. Badgers will fill their nesting chambers with dry grass and leaves to keep them warm while they sleep. And we can also see a fox den there, with three foxes snoozing away. Now that we're back in the topsoil, we can see the roots of grass and other plants growing all around us as well. And we can also start to see lots of little creepy crawlies again, just like we saw at the start of our journey. Like beetles that lay their eggs in loose soil. When the eggs hatch, the larva wriggle out and stay underground during winter to keep them from freezing. 
We can also see a mole digging his tunnel just under the Earth's surface, looking for worms and other tasty insects to eat. And finally, we can see a nest of ants. Worker ants go to and from the nest to the surface to find food, and they also take care of young ants and protect the nest to keep it safe. And finally, we've made it back up to the surface, and what a journey it's been. It's great to see the sunlight again and to feel the cool shade of the trees. It's so peaceful here that it's amazing to think about everything that's happening just down beneath our feet. But we're back on the surface, and that pile of earth right there finishes our journey. It's a molehill, and it was made by that little mole who shoveled the soil he dug out of his tunnel. Wow, what an amazing journey that was. Thank you very much for joining me on this little adventure uh, through all of the layers of the Earth's surface. And I hope you've learned something new about geology, the study of the rocks and minerals and all of the things that make up our planet Earth.